what you see in the vise uh, is referred to uh, in several terms I've seen. Uh, a tungsten tube midge. Uh, that would refer to the bead used. Uh, I'm not using a tungsten bead. I'm using a brass bead or a cyclops bead. Uh, or they just call it a bead head tube midge. Uh, I think I saw one guy call it a wire thread or a wire tube. I forgot what he said. <laughs> it's something like that, tube midge, uh, wire wire inserted tube midge or something. Uh, but anyway, so that's kind of what it is. Uh, and <clears throat> we're going to go over how to actually put this body together before we even get into tying the fly. Um, so what this is is uh, micro tubing or uh, midge tubing clear. Uh, and we have extra small wire that's going to go inside this tube to create this what looks like segments uh, and ribbing. Uh, and it's actually pretty neat. I know you can't get a super great shot of it on the video here, uh, but it kind of gives this 3D look to the rib of the fly. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show you how to get that tube or the wire inside the tube first. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Plus, I'll show you towards the end how we can actually turn this into a flashback. And you can use a little UV resin on there. So uh, let's get that out the way. And and I'll show you how. Uh, I'll show you a couple different ways to uh, get uh, get beads on a small hook. Uh, that was a size 18. Uh, this fly is typically tied between a 16 and a 22 uh, from what I've seen. And, um, yeah, so we'll just go from there. So what we're looking to actually do here is get wire through this tubing. Um, and it's once you kind of get the hang of it, it's not too difficult. Uh, if you plan on tying uh, more than one, I'd recommend doing your, your body lengths at the same time. So if you're following along with the videos in the classes, which this is a video for one of the classes over at Fly Tying for Beginners, uh, I've got some lengths for you uh, to cut. Because uh, it's uh, anything outside of two inches, getting the wire inside is just pretty much damn near impossible. So a ruler comes in real handy right here. So if you have a ruler, uh, break it out. But on a size 18, which is what I'm going to be tying on, I'm going to use 1 and 3 8 inch of the stretch tube. This stuff here. So you want to cut this to 1 and 3 8 And uh, kind of a fun little thing here. If you make it a little bit longer than 1 and 3 8 you're going to be left with... <clears throat> see if I can find a... Grab one here you'll get left with these little clippings like this. And uh, this is one of the few materials I actually save. Uh, and the reason for that is these hollow tubes make excellent extended mayfly bodies. Um, so it's up to you. But uh, you could take these and put them in a little Ziploc bag or something and save them. So if you want to tie, say, like a size 20 mayfly or something like that, this makes a fantastic body for it. I'll, I'll tell you real quickly how you can make it look really cool. Uh, you can get some paintbrush. <clears throat> uh, get like a clear uh, paintbrush bristle and then get like three or four of them. And then you can slide them through this tube. Obviously take out the wire. And then get yourself a pair of hemostats. You slide the... Uh, uh, paint brush bristles through. I'll get to back to the fly in just a second. But uh, you slide the uh, bristles through that tube. You just need two or three, uh, no more than three. Uh, and you can color it with a marker. Then you take a pair of hemostats and you want them to have these really small ridges. Uh, now you can, uh, several ways to do it. You can color them with a black marker or you can heat them up if you decide to color the tube itself. And uh, you're just going to pinch onto there, Oop. pinch onto it like that. And then what it's going to do is it's going to kind of burn the ribbing into place for you. So anyway, that's just kind of a little fun way to save this material and repurpose it for something else. 
uh, so you don't have to do all the little itty bitty work later. Uh, okay, so in order to get uh, the wire into the tube, you want to cut the tube length to what I already said, or maybe I didn't already say. I'll say it again. Uh, so if it's on an 18, I'm, I'm using 1 and 3 8 inch of tubing. Uh, on a size 16, you're going to want 1 and 1 half inch of tubing. Uh, and on a size 14, you're going to want 1 and 5 8 inch of tubing. And you, you have to use extra small wire for this. I'm just going to use some extra small uh, UTC black wire. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is the most challenging part up front. Sorry, I'm trying to prep everything. And I, I can't really do this on camera. I've tried a couple of times. But what you want to do is I keep, I keep the wire on the spool. And I keep the wire inside of the spool so that it sticks out like this. That allows me to palm the spool and pinch the wire so that the wire can stay somewhat free and kink free uh, inside of my hand. Uh, next, I've got, I don't know, I've got about three quarter inch there. That may be a little long. Uh, it's a little difficult to do it at that length. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to take it, and uh, I found kind of at an angle is the best because it'll allow you to see light through the tube right there. I don't, I don't, there you go. You can kind of see it on my finger. You can kind of see the light coming through the edge of the tube. And you can, you've just got to kind of work it until you can get it in there. Oh. This is probably the, uh, well, it's definitely the hardest thing on this entire fly. <laughs> Uh, it might be uh, the hardest thing in the entire session. But uh, once you get that down, it's no problem. If for some reason you can't figure this out, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You can leave the rib out uh, or rib underneath the fly. Uh, but I just want to... There it goes. So when it's on the tube like that, you want to try to get it on as far as possible. And then just move your fingers back a little and straighten the wire out. And then trying to just slide the uh, tube onto the wire does not work very well. So what I do is I come out right at the tip of where the wire is. And I start to rotate and push. And as I rotate and push, it'll it feeds the wire into the tube or it feeds the tube onto the wire however you want to say it so they come just outside if you can kind of see where the the black mark is just I, oh, I don't have a third hand but it's like right there uh, and you just kind of gently twist and just gently push until it comes out the other side so um, I've already got one done so this is a great place to pause um, the video so when you have that done, you want to have your wire come out the tube by, oh, quarter, half inch on both sides. And we want to fold this over because this is, oh, crikey, where'd it go? There we go. Because this is a stretch tube, we don't want this material to stretch. We just want the tube part of it so that uh, uh, it's nice and thin and uh, the wires inside. And so once you have that part, what we want to do is, oops, sorry, I was off camera. What we want to do is we want to fold this over. And it can take a second. We want to fold it over. Once you kind of have it over, you can take it in between your fingers and roll it. I've got my camera zoomed in way further than I normally do, so I keep dropping down to where my hands normally are, and I know it's going out of camera. Sorry about that. But so that it kind of hooks around like so. And we want to do the same thing to the other side. We're just going to pinch it over and kind of collect it and roll it so that... Oh, I missed that one. There you go, so that it looks like that on both sides. And it doesn't really matter which way the wire is going. 
Uh, all this does is it allows, uh, it helps us to stop uh, the tube from stretching. So if you look inside there, I don't know if you can see that. I don't have a good way to show it to you, I guess. Um, it, maybe a white piece of paper that I haven't written on. There you go. You can kind of see the tube inside there. Uh, and you can use different colors inside there for sure. Uh, but what this does is it gives this really neat little 3D effect to the fly. So that's the body and the rib and the all that segmentation, everything all in one, one shot. So now that we have that part done, let's move over to getting the bead on the hook. Uh, when you're tying midges, it can be very difficult to get your little tiny beads on the hooks. And so I'll show you a, a couple of things that may help you. One is turn the eye up into the vise and clamp down on it so that the hook is sticking out something like this. Uh, and different angles for different people, right? Uh, and then what that'll allow you to do is get your bead and slide it on. Uh, I actually kind of like mine, and it's much more difficult with the camera in my way, but I kind of like mine at a little bit of a, a sloped angle like that as opposed to up and down. I've seen, it, it really just depends on what you favor, really. Uh, different people do it different ways, or at different angles. Uh, you can kind of rotate the, the bead in your hand until you get the small hole where you need it. And of course I drop the bead. And you can slide it on this way. Another thing, I'm going to do that in just a second. Another thing you can do is get a pair of tweezers. And all that's inside of there is some craft foam. Uh, I've cut the craft foam basically to size on the sides. And I've actually shaved it down a little bit in between there. So I literally took my scissors and came, came up the sides to cut it back a little bit. And I turned it this way and came in between and kind of cut an angle into it. Uh, now when you do it this way, you're going to pick the bead up off the table or uh, whatever you're, you're using in particular. Uh, but you want to get your fingers kind of close. Uh, but it does kind of give a little extension and it will help you do that. Maybe I can kind of demonstrate that a little bit. Uh, I Honestly, I don't prefer this method. It's not for me. Uh, I've just seen other people use it and uh, so I want to kind of pass it along so that maybe maybe it'll help you. So you you got your bead like that, and I'm going to try to do it without my finger getting in the way. There you go, and you can slide it right on just like so. Uh, you know, I'm just going to leave it on there. Uh, otherwise, you can just kind of fiddle around with it in your finger and roll it until it gets there. Um, and so, you know, you may want to, if you get on a roll, putting uh, beads on hooks, you may want to just stick with it and do, you know, four or five or six or whatever, however many flies you're tying. Okay, very cool. So the hook I got in the vise is an SE one size 18 uh, Scuddy Merger from Lightning Strike. Uh, you can tie this pattern up to oh, probably 14, uh, you know, but uh, I think typically they go between um, 18 and 22, I believe, if I remember correctly, as the uh, standard sizes. And... Uh, what I have for my thread is I'm using some 14-aught uh, uh, shear. This is made by Griffin in black. And I'm going to start my thread directly behind uh, the bead. And I'm going to work it back until I have about a bodkin width in there. Something like so. Now, I want to make note of something. When you're using Cyclops beads or other beads and you're pairing it with different kinds of hooks, different hooks ha have a different width in the hook eye. And so you may get, uh, you may find a batch of beads or a batch of hooks or some that are just not quite compatible. And so what you'll find is even though technically they should fit, the bead slides off of the eye. Uh, I'm going to show you a way to fix that using our body uh, that we just just made like this okay so what we want to do at this point is after we've gone back about a bodkin width we're going to come back forward to behind right behind the bead again and we're going to trim out our thread uh, 
that's probably not going to really matter. Eh, good enough. Uh, so this is one of those places where some gel super glue really comes in handy. And all I'm going to do, uh, this is the uh, squeeze control. And I'm just going to squeeze out just a really tiny little drop. And put it right on the tip. So it it's almost matches the bead size. Uh, this can take a little practice. Uh, you don't want to do too much because it will shoot out the front of the bead and uh, clog the eye. And it's not, not quite so easy to uh, clean out. But what I like to do is... Uh, I like to try to get that wire facing down if possible and the curvature uh, kind of going up. Uh, and I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm going to lift that bead up just a little bit. I don't know if you can, let's see if I can turn this. I don't know if you can quite see that. I'm going to slide. There we go. I'm just going to slide this in underneath that bead. There we go. Into the bead. Just like that. And that came out on me. I'm telling you, like these are some cool techniques. It's just so much di more difficult to do with a camera in my face. There we go. Into the bead, just like that. And I'm just going to place uh, three or four turns in so that it's locked in place. I can kind of situate the bead, uh, give it a little twist to lock around. Now the gel control. Uh, super glue <clears throat> it uh, it can take a few minutes to to dry out uh, and keep the bead in place so try not to fidget with it too much and so on so I'm gonna lift my body up at about a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna start wrapping back and I want this thread to come up let me turn that vise a little bit I want my thread to come up and on to the actual body material so it slides down to cr help create touching wraps. And the reason I want touching wraps is uh, the nicer the underbody here, um, the easier it is to gonna, uh, the thread underbody, the easier it will be to put the colored underbody in. Uh, so traditionally, this fly uh, was actually tied in at this point right here and tied off and this stretchy material with the uh, ribbon side was wrapped up a gold hook shank or a brass hook shank and that color was used as the underbody so there was no thread on the hook shank at all uh, that's cool but it's also a little bit more difficult to do so once I get to the back I want to be just past the barb not quite to the bend in the back of the uh, uh, or the back of the bend, or the inside part of the back of the bend, I should say. What I'm going to grab next is uh, one strand of gold flashaboo. Uh, you can use whatever colors you want here for your rib, your flat, uh, your flashaboo, your underbody, whatever you want to do. You can really have fun making these. And I'll show you the easy way to tie this stuff in. So I'm just going to take my flashaboo. I'm going to slide it up under my thread. You see, I've got a, quite a bit out front. I'm just going to make one turn over. And you want to gently grab both ends and gently pull. If you pull too much too fast, it can start to curly cue on you, which I think it's going to do. Oh, no, it just got stuck. And when you get close, you can see my flash right there. All we want to do is make sure the flash is on the left side of the bead. Now, obviously, if you're a left-handed tire, it'll be right, the right side of the bead. And now we're going to work our thread forward with touching turns all the way back up. I don't know what I have there, but it's going to mess with me. You can see it. You can see that little ding right there. It's going to mess with my underbody. That's okay. But what we want to do is work all the way up to the back side of the bead. Next, to help kind of create a curvature, this, this part's a little important to help expose that body ribbing. Is we're going to take our thread, we're going to wrap back, 
uh, to about the hook point. We're just past. And we're going to wrap back forward. Now we're going to do it again. We're going to wrap back, but this time not quite as far. And wrap forward. And we're going to just kind of keep going back and forth like this until we've kind of created this little taper. And I didn't do my underbody very well here, but you kind of get the idea. At this point, we're going to take that flash and we're going to start wrapping forward. I did the underbody okay. It's just it's not one of my better ones. And we want this flash to touch itself as we come forward so that it's kind of fully getting full coverage. When you have these lumps and bumps in there, I know they're very minuscule. It makes it difficult for the flashaboo to cover them because it wants to slide to one side or the other. Uh, and that's okay. If you've got little gaps in there, you know what? Honestly, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, you'll, you'll get better at doing this little this little fly. It's really not a deal breaker at all. Yeah, we're just going to come on up. Now to finish this off, I like to bring my flash. You can see how it's in line with my thread. Down, around, and to the front side of my thread. I'm going to pull it over to the back side. Place a wrap in. I'm going to adjust it so that it's coming off directly off the back and I'm going to place a few wraps in again kind of going with that whole mindset of we have about a bodkin width right there now I'm going to trim this out uh, I'll show you how to put uh, a flashback in on this in just a second may need to put it another turn or two in now the easiest way to handle this is actually with some hackle pliers. Uh, we're just gonna we're gonna grab both the wire and the very tip of the stretching or the uh, the tube, the stretchy tube. There we go, and we're gonna start working our way forward. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a. Um, with this stretch tube, it'll, oftentimes it wants to slide off the back like this. And we obviously don't want it to do that. So you can use your fingernail to get the first turn in place. We don't want to pull. Like a lot of these materials, you know, you're, you're going to pull. We don't want to do that. We, wanna, we don't want the, the stretch tube to stretch. We want to leave it where it is. But you can use your fingernail. You can put your bodkin right here. And with your hackle pliers on, oh, sorry. Let me see if I can switch around. But with your hackle pliers here, you can just kind of let it dangle. Obviously, it's difficult to do this backwards, but obviously my body would be facing me. But you would uh, you just like kind of like let it rest and such. It's much easier for me to use my fingernail here. But you want to get a turn or two in. So I just use my thumbnail right there. I'm not allowing that stretch tube to work its way to the back. Now I can make another turn. By turn three, you should be good to go, and you should be able to remove uh, whatever device you've got in the back right there. Now we're just slowly going to work this thing forward. We want the stretch tube to touch itself. As it's working itself forward, uh, the spacing, because of how we made the underbody, it should make the spacing uh, larger as you go forward. Mine was a little large to begin with, so you may not quite see it. I need to add just a little bit more room. I can kind of pinch this here, pull out my wire, grab the wire, and still use the full tube. Once I get up to the, the thread part here, where we're gonna have our little collar, just bring your tube down onto the opposite side of your tying, whether that's to you or aft from you and we're gonna start placing thread wraps over the top. Uh, three or four should be good here. Like, kinda like that. And just lift up, and we're gonna place a few thread wraps right, right on top. Fingernail clippers work exceptionally well here. 
before I cut this off, this is the part that I was showing you you can save for your Mayfly bodies. Uh, this one's a little bit small. So if you, when you do this, if you, this was at one and three eighths. So say you went out to one and a half, you'd get another eighth of an inch in there, which would get you up to about here. Uh, right in this area, and you and this would be that would be a perfect length uh, for an extended mayfly body. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, there's some really cool. I don't have any videos out on them, but I've seen them. I've actually tied them. I've fished them. They work. Uh, it's it's a pretty cool little deal. Uh, this is actually one of the few uh, materials that I'll actually save if they're at the, at the right length. So there's that. So you should have a fly that looks like this. Oftentimes what people will do is uh, just create a thread collar, boom, you're done, and that's it. Um, if you want to make a flashback on this fly, uh, again, if you bought the material kit for uh, the classes, it's not, uh, those flies were not in there. It's just this fly that's in there. But you just take your flash or whatever flash you want to use, you put it in, and you can see how I left extra. Uh, it's just so that I can handle the material easily. I can fold it over and tie it on with just a couple of turns. So this is kind of just a, this is really just an option that you can uh, spice up your spice up your fly if you want. So we're just going to pretend like this thing isn't there. We'll 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 go back to doing the the, re the regular fly. So just like so. Okay, so you can leave that thread collar the way it is uh, and whip finish and glue it and all that. Uh, oftentimes what's gonna happen is the bead gap is gonna exceed or your thread is gonna be really short of the diameter of the bead, especially the better you get at tying these and you're using fewer thread wraps. So I'm gonna take a pinch of black dubbing. This is just some dry fly dubbing. And I'm going to put it on there. And I'm going to dub this thing. That's going to kind of make a beefy collar for this one, but that's all right. And now you can use your dry fly dubbing to make up the difference in the thread gap, just like that. And have a nice little, I've got a little too much, uh, dry fly dubbing on there. So I'll take that out. Okay. Now to finish this fly, ideally we want our thread to sneak in behind the collar and the bead. And so to glue this thing shut, I'm going to take a uh, my crazy glue with the brush on it and I'm just going to come down and wipe some crazy glue on the thread but only to about three quarters of an inch I don't want too much on there and I'm actually gonna just take that and wrap about three turns and now I can whip finish while the glue is still wet you want to do it while the glue is still wet so you don't want to hesitate Now, when I make my three or four turn whip finish, I want to pull to the back. You can use your nails uh, or, you know, other device, tweezers or little bodkin or whatever, and pull. Oftentimes, what you're going to feel happen is you're going to feel this thing just kind of jerk uh, your, your bobbin in your left hand or right hand if you're a left-hand tire. And it, what that is is the thread sliding in between your collar and your bead. Ideally, that's what you want. So at that point, you just cut your thread, and uh, that's the fly. And didn't I just have it there? Yeah. So ideal, ideally, that's just the, that's it. That's the fly. Now, just kind of for funsies, you can take this gold flash and drape it directly over the back to make a flashback. If you want to kind of up your game and test your hand at making midges, make it a little more difficult on yourself. And all you gotta do is just, just like that, 
Yep. Um, also, you, you'd really do this before you do your whip finish and everything. This is kind of an afterthought, right? I'm just kind of showing you like how it would look because uh, this fly is actually uh, technically already done. It's the, that glue is not going to let me sneak my thread in there. I'm going to see if it's going to let me hold that flash into place so you can kind of get a f flavor of what it looks like. So there's kind of some kind of some fun things on this one actually. Uh, whether whether it's saving material, there we go. So you can kind of get that little just that little hint of flash over the thorax. Uh, I'll see if I can glue this shut just so I can put a dab of UV on there just to show. It's not going to look perfect because uh, this should have been tucked in into the bead with the original whip finish, but. It is what it is, right? It's a it's a demonstration for uh, learning. And that's what it is. So, well, uh, I lost it. Let's see if I can get it back. I might get it. Yeah, it's kind of a short one. There you go. That's good enough. Again, this little, this should be gold all the way up front. This thread should be tucked in between those two points. When you go to cut your thread off of here, uh, you can just trim it off normally if you want. I found a better way to do something like this, especially up against the back of a bead, is just place your scissors against it and just swipe away. Uh, and it helps alleviate the little thread tag. Uh, let me get my fingernail clippers in here and trim out this little front spot and uh, I'll just kind of add a uh, just a little bit of uh, UV resin here to kind of make it a little oops sorry I didn't mean to bump the camera a little bubble I know it's a long video for a little microscopic fly but uh, there's just some cool things in here that uh, you can do and add and um, different ways that you can uh, kind of treat something like this which is really neat uh, so I'm trying to kind of give you a full exposure of uh, when you look at other midges like how they're going about making them so now you can kind of see if it's got that little bubble on there it's that little UV bubble and we'll zap that so I'll put the original fly back in the vise in a second you know it's a long video for a little uh, midge that should take you about uh, three minutes and 30 seconds to die uh, but there's a lot involved in this one, but uh, you can make them look super cool if you want to get creative on these guys. So anyway, there you go. Now you've got this little bubble back, flashback. Uh, yeah, I get the. What, I don't even know what you call it anymore. But it's a super cool little midge. Uh, you, you custom color these things to your 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 taste and your waters, and uh, I guess you can name it whatever you want. But uh, so anyway, when you're done with the original pattern it should look like this and then if you want the little bubble back flashback you can kind of see the difference let me see if I can get my foam tweezers get those into play here oh, I dropped it darn it well, I was going to hold them up next to one another. Well, that's kind of a bummer, because now I can't even find it. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. Well, I let it run. Oh, there it is. All right. All right. One more, one more try. We've already gone this long. One more try so you can kind of see the two next to each other. I'll just have to go the other way. All right. So... There's a little bubble back version, the, the flashback bubble back, and uh, the standard version of these uh, two flies. So, uh, anyway, play around with those, have some fun. Uh, these flies, uh, other than getting that wire inside the tube, they're not too difficult to do. Uh, and uh, there's a world of opportunity for you to get, get creative on these ones. So. Uh, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I always appreciate that. If you have found this video uh, outside of the tying classes, 
Um, feel free to uh, join us over at Fly Tying for Beginners on Facebook. Um, these videos, or this video in particular, along with most of the other ones I do, are geared towards uh, the class, the tying classes we do over there. Uh, so you can jump on there and uh, join our classes if you'd like. Um, have fun, happy tying, and uh, we'll see you later. Yeah.